No, um, well, I think, you know, it is very odd when I think back on the educational system. And does anyone else think this like, boy, I went to math class, I went to English class, I went to French class or whatever. And then in your day-to-day -day life, it's not like, you know, from nine to 10, I'm only gonna be doing math. And then from like 10 to 11, I'm gonna read or like, I mean, it makes no sense, right? As, as human beings, we are doing things simultaneously all the time. And so I do think that what we need to do is do a, a, a true paradigm shift. But the way to do that is that you have to design. So like all, everything that we're doing through here, even what just happened today, you coming in, the way that you had to register, that was a user experience that you went through. That was designed by the Emerge team and whoever else they bring in to design this experience for you. Today on the stage, Carlos for all day has decided and designed what the EdTech platform looks like. Schools were designed in the uh, 1900s for a very specific purpose. Um, and we have to be clear about that, what that purpose was. And the design uh, worked. It was to really create people who could work automatically like they were machines, without having to think in any real way, shape, or form, and just robotically do a task, do it well, do memorization. Well, the world has changed. We don't need those types of workers anymore. So what we need to do is actually, and this is where Kumar, this is where Kumar goes crazy, right? But we need to dismantle what we know of the public school system and of the systems in general, and we need to redesign them knowing what we know about human beings. What does it mean to be human-centered first? When you're talking about uh, educating the whole child, you mean you're talking about educating an entire human being. This is the part I think we always forget about. Children are humans. They have feelings. They need to eat, they need to sleep correctly, and you don't know when that child comes into you in the, in, at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, can I tell a personal story, is that okay? All right. I'm gonna tell, I don't know how much time we have, and, and because I'm an English teacher, I can't be loquacious, so y'all can stop me when you want to. Uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you a little bit about why um, I have made a bit of a name for myself in the education space. So I was an English teacher, and I taught in urban schools, and I taught English, and, in, in New Jersey at that time, students had to pass my class, all four years of English, and they had to pass the state assessment in English in order to get their high school diploma. And then students would have my class first thing in the morning, it would be 7.30 in the morning, okay? 7.30. So my class is generally considered one of the most important classes, but you're gonna put in first thing in a day for teenagers who we all know cannot wake up by 7.30 in the morning and be productive. But not only do we know that, I then went and learned from my students, and a lot of, because we worked in an urban district, a lot of my students were either the breadwinner or a primary contributor financially to the home. But they're teenagers, what kind of jobs can they get? Retail. Where's the retail? At the mall, this is New Jersey, at the mall. But they, can't, they don't have a car to go to the mall, so they gotta take two, three buses to go to the mall. So after school, they're going, they're doing the afternoon or, and or night shift, which means they don't close until 10, 11 o'clock, which means they take two, three buses back, which means they don't get home till one, two o'clock in the morning. But you expect them to be there at seven o'clock and then tell them they don't care about their education because they're not there by seven. That is a problem because you're not teaching to the child. You're not teaching to the human being and understanding what is actually uh, what actually they go through and what they care about and you're making assumptions because you can do it they can do it they're teenagers and they're doing more than probably most of us did as teenagers going uh, picking up their kid picking up their uh, uh, little siblings after school some of them have their own children so some of them were parents etc I'm talking about high school and until you thought about what it means to actually teach an entire child a human being this school system is not designed to do that currently. So what can we do as a community, as a society, to say, we no longer believe in that. We know that our children deserve more. We can give them more. So let's break down what we've got and start from scratch because they are awesome and they deserve the best. <laughs>